Welcome to Tollefson Physics. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take the law of universal gravitation and we're going to apply it to objects that are going in orbit. And so objects going in orbit are <clears throat> going in a circle, right? And so we're going to use the idea that the net force on an object going around the Earth, so a satellite, could be a moon, could be a planet around the sun, so anything that's going around something else is going to be related to circular motion, even if it is in an in elliptical orbit. So you can look at what the curvature uh, is at the point that you're interested in. And so in our case, what we're going to assume is we're going to assume that the orbit is circular and just talk about averages instead, uh, but we're gonna be able to predict some very interesting things. So what we're gonna look at first is we're gonna look at the International Space Station. So I wrote down some of the stats and, and, and stuff that we're going to need to be able to figure this out. But the International Space Station is in an orbit that's about 400 kilometers above the surface of the Earth. And so we're going to use that information to predict, um, we can predict two things. We can actually predict how fast this is going around the Earth and we can predict um, how long it takes to go around the Earth. So a couple things that we can do, and here's some of the information, the radius and the mass of the Earth if we need it. And then a reminder of how, how can we calculate force due to gravity uh, when we don't know what the acceleration due to gravity is. And so we can use universal law of gravitation. Okay, so let's think about, you know, we're basically going to start with Newton's second law, right? Newton's second law states that the net force equals the mass times the acceleration. Now, the, what is the net force on this object? Well, it's the force due to gravity, right? And so the force due to gravity is going, in this particular case, in a circle. So I can substitute V squared over R as the acceleration. So I get an expression that looks like this. But how do I calculate force due to gravity? I can't use mg in this case because I don't know what the acceleration of, of Earth's gravity is 400 kilometers above the surface, but I can use this. So let's do that. All right, so let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to substitute in GMM over R squared, and that equals MV squared over R. All right, and so I can do some simplification, and ultimately I could calculate what's the speed of the space station. Although the more interesting question is what the period is, so I'm, I'm more interested in that, but we can do both along the way. So the question is, I have two m's, right? One is due to the space station, one is due to the Earth. Which one is which? Well, the circular motion equation tells us that. So what's the thing that's going in a circle? Well, it's the International Space Station. So in, in the way that I wrote this, little m is the International Space Station. And little m cancels. So it doesn't matter what the, the mass of the object is. As long as it's at this orbit, it's going to travel at this certain speed uh, so that it keeps going around the Earth. If it travels at a slower speed, then it's going to lose orbit and start to crash towards Earth. If it travels at a higher speed, it's going to try to go out to a larger orbit. And if that speed is large enough, you can leave the entire pull of Earth's gravity anyway. Um, I can also uh, simplify this R and get rid of that R. So what do I end up with? I end up with V squared equals G M over R. So I can figure out the speed based on that. So let's just quickly do that. I'm going to do 6.67 EE negative 11. And then I'm going to multiply it by the mass of the Earth. 5.9 seven two uh, ee 24 and then I'm going to divide it by the radius now we got to be careful about the radius so the radius of the earth is uh, 6378 the uh, height above the earth is another 400 so really the uh, R for my for the ISS is going to be six seven seven eight kilometers which is 6.778 times 10 to the 6 meters. So I'm going to put that in. I'm going to put that in. 6.778 EE6, and there's the number I get. And so um, I'm going to take the square root so I can get the velocity right away. So square root. Uh, I hit the wrong button. Delete, delete, delete. There we go. Square root. And I get a speed of 7,666 meters per second. All right, so it's, it's moving pretty good. It's moving pretty good. Well, what about what about the velocity? 
All right, not velocity. What about the period? I want to know how long it takes to go all around. So what I also know, right, what I also know is velocity. So let me write that off to the side here. So velocity is change in distance divided by change in time. We're talking about a circular distance is the circumference, and I want to know the period. That's what I want to know. So what I could do is here, I can substitute this in and solve a different way. So if I square that, 2 squared is 4, pi squared, um, r squared over t squared. All right. And so now I'm going to use this. I'm going to, I'm going to simplify and solve for t. Okay, so um, let me just kind of make it all linear. So gmt squared, if I cross multiply there, equals 4 pi squared r cubed. All right, and, and this period squared to a distance cubed is actually one of Kepler's laws. It's derived directly from this, although he made it from empirical observations. But using Newton's uh, laws, we can actually come up with it um, from a from a, a Newton Newtonian standpoint. And so I actually want to know t. So t is going to equal. I'll keep it squared, just so I don't have to write a square root. And it's going to equal this expression. All right, and so then when we plug in all those numbers, this is going to give me a period of approximately 93 minutes. Um, not exactly, it's about 92 point something, but I won't take the time to, to, to actually type it in the calculator right now. So it's approximately 93, um, 93. We'll go with that, right? So, so T is approximately 93 minutes. Uh, rounding, big time, right? So we can actually look at things like, okay, well, what happens? What if, you know, I look at this expression right here and let me, let me rewrite that expression. So let's rewrite that on the next page, right? T squared equals four pi squared R cubed over G M. Okay. So I'm going to make a big rounding thing just to make our math easier. So the ISS, is going to have a period that's approximately 90 minutes. Okay, I'm just rounding a lot. And its elevation is uh, 400 kilometers above the Earth. Well, there's another type of satellite that is out there. And there's going to be some rounding errors in doing this, but it'll, it'll be close enough. It's called a geosynchronous satellite. And a geosynchronous satellite, something like a weather satellite or communication satellite that is above the same point of the Earth all of the time. And so because it's above the same point in, of Earth all of the time, you want a period of 24 hours. So how does that affect the height? How does that affect the height? Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to do some reasoning. I'm going to do some reasoning. I, I know I know T is related to R cubed, right? I know T is related to R cubed. So one way to look at this is I can look at this relationship by itself. And what I soon realize is when I'm thinking about all this, all of that is a constant. Yeah, okay? So all of that is a constant. And if I think about this a little bit harder, 24 hours, this is one and a half hours. So this is actually 16 times bigger than the ISS. So if I'm making the period 16 times bigger, how does that affect the height? Well, the first thing I actually need to think about, is how does it actually affect the radius? So the radius, what we wrote down before, R equals um, six, seven, seven, eight kilometers. All right. So this is a constant. So it doesn't matter. There's this adds up. This is a number that you multiply r cubed by to get this. So here's a, here's something you can do, right? Let me put t squared of the ISS is proportional. I'm not going to write proportional right at this point, but it's proportional to the radius cubed. So it's proportional, but it's 
going to be the same ratio if it is the geosynchronous satellite. All right, so all I did is I cross multiplied, realized this is a constant. Uh, well, realized that this was, a, I didn't cross multiply. I realized this was a constant and I'm like, okay, T squared is proportional to R cubed. And that's always true. So what can I do to actually answer my question here? Um, well, so what I can do, and I think I'll write it right next to it, is the ISS, I'm gonna write it in hours, because I can actually. So 1.5 hours is the period squared. I wanna know, well actually I do know, <laughs> that, that it's 24 hours squared for a geosynchronous satellite. So I know that this has to be true. I know that R, because I'm dealing with R right now, is 6778 kilometers. And I actually can do this not in SI units because they cancel out. They cancel out, and I don't care about all that stuff in the middle. So this will equal R cubed of the geo, right? And so when I do that, and I probably should have done it the other way, but it's the way I wrote it. So 24, whoops, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do the math upside down. 24 squared divided by 1.5 squared is the reciprocal of this. So it's 1 divided by 256. All right. So this ends up being 1 divided by 256. It's been divided out. So th this means this has to be 256 times bigger than that, essentially. right? So that's, that's the math I'm going to do. So I'm going to take 6, 7, 7, 8. And kilometers is fine in this case. Cube it. And then I'm going to multiply it by 256 because that's that's what this fraction ends up being. And that will give me the value of this cubed. And now I'm going to hit 3, cube root, answer. And I get an R for the geosynchronous orbit that is 43038 kilometers. Right? So it's much further out. It's much further out. Um, compared to what uh, what it would be, and so that is the um, radius I need to subtract off. So don't forget the radius of the Earth is six three seven eight kilometers, and so when I subtract those two numbers minus six three seven eight, I get three six six, and it rounds to sixty. All right, so. You know, it's, it's considerably higher above the Earth. And so it's actually, we could also do a similar analysis with speed, um, which we won't do. But the, here's the thing. I can actually, if you think about, if you're able to think about things in proportions, you can actually compare objects. And you don't have to know some of this stuff. Like, if I didn't know the mass of the Earth, hey, guess what? That's okay. I don't need it. I don't need it. As long as I have enough information, I can actually look at this relationship between the two objects to be able, be able to predict and figure things out. All right. And so that's approximately what, what the, the um, altitude of a geosynchronous satellite is. All right. So what I hope you learned today was the fact that you can take things that go in orbit and use circular motion, use Newton's uh, law of uh, universal gravitation to be able to figure things out. And then on top of that, use what I call proportional reasoning to actually compare um, different things. Because one of the next things I could ask is, okay, it took 24 hours for a geosynchronous satellite to go around the Earth. What about the moon, right? The moon's will round it to 28 days. How far away does that mean the moon has to be? Right? So you can always do that kind of thing and, and Google an answer. All right. So I hope you learned something today and I will see you next time.